first and welcome you all here tonight. My name is Chris Stevenson. I'm the Dean of Academic Instruction here at Home Community College. It is my pleasure to extend a special welcome to you all on this evening of a special event which honors Ms. Judy Griffin here in the front row. Uh, our recipient of the 2023 Humanities Teacher of the Year, the Mississippi Humanities Council. Before we begin, I'm going to give a little brief background on what the Humanities Council is, kind of give you an understanding of why this is such a prestigious award. The Humanities Council is a private, non-profit corporation funded by the United States Congress and the National Endowment for the Humanities to provide public programs and traditional liberal arts disciplines to serve non-profit groups in Mississippi. The Mississippi Humanities Council creates opportunities for Mississippians to learn about themselves and the larger world and enriches communities through simple conversations about our history and culture. Now, I'm sure that everyone is looking forward to tonight's presentation at this time I would like to introduce our featured speaker, Ms. Judith Griffin. Ms. Griffin, a resident of Amy, earned both her bachelor's and master's degree from Mississippi State University. Since the fall of 2009, she has served as a full-time psychology instructor, transitioned that position from adjunct status, which began in 2005. Previously, she was a mental health therapist with the Region 3 Mental Health Center, initially serving children through crisis intervention, and later providing mental health services to adults and the elderly. At ICC, her activities included serving as advisor to the Beta Tau Sigma chapter on the Tupelo campus of Phi Theta Kappa, for which she received the Regional Hallmark Paragon Award in 2012. Griffey is a member of the ICC Faculty and Staff Association and is a past president of that chapter on the Tupelo campus. She is a member of Meadowood Baptist Church, Church where she is an active member in the choir. Ms. Griffey and her husband Sam have two children, Ashley and Spencer, who are with us here tonight. Um, her presentation tonight is entitled, What Do You Say to Yourself? Exploring Self-Talk and Its Impact on Personal Function. So, without further ado, the star of the show tonight is Judith Greer. Some distress and then what you can do about that. 
Uh, if you look at research about self-talk, well, one thing that you're going to see uh, most of the research mention uh, is some historical theories in regard to self-talk. Uh, and uh, Lev Vygotsky. So he uh, was a developmental psychologist, uh, and he had some thoughts about uh, how we develop cognitively. Uh, one thing uh, he thought was that uh, a child, you really can't take them out of the social context that uh, parents and teachers help guide a child's uh, development. Uh, some other thoughts he had was the importance of that social interaction, and he said that uh, we could, we would develop three different types of speech. Uh, first is social speech. So this is just back and forth speech. Uh, between you and someone else. And so for the child, the child is talking uh, to others in their environment, uh, and uh, other people are talking to them. And there's also some guidance and self-regulation uh, coming from parents and coming from uh, teachers within that environment. Uh, another thing that you will see uh, develop uh, is private speech. Uh, so a young child will begin to talk out loud to themselves and so uh, they could be playing with a toy or, or doing something uh, that they're enjoying and they're talking about the activity uh, to themselves as they're going about doing that sort of guiding their own behavior uh, now he did say that this type of private speech talking oneself does peak and at that time the private speech goes inward uh, so uh, the child is now talking to themselves uh, within their mind. Um, so uh, here's a little question to you. Uh, today, how many of you have talked to yourself within your mind? Me. All right, yes, yes. Um, how many of you talk to yourself out loud? All right, so, uh, so one thing that you will see with uh, the private speech and the inner speech uh, is that uh, both of these are a form of self-talk. And uh, when we look at some of the research that's out there, uh, some of the research will cover one uh, or the other or both. Um, so if, if we just think about today, you probably, you know, had some self-talk going on. Um, maybe, maybe it was as you were coming into the Fine Arts Auditorium uh, and uh, you were uh, saying to yourself, oh, I hope I get to sit by my friend. Uh, maybe you came in early and you were sitting there a while and you're like, hmm, and thinking to yourself, oh, I wonder how long this is going to last. Uh, so, yes, I'll try to, to you know, cut it off uh, not too far in here, but uh, uh, it could be that this morning, you were thinking about a conversation that you had yesterday, doing a little social assessment, and so uh, you're thinking about what you said, and what they said, and what you said, and what they said, uh, and it is that inner dialogue that is doing that. Uh, so so um, we have all different types of self-talk going on, and a lot of it is very helpful. Sometimes there are some uh, aspects that are not very helpful. Uh, when thinking about my own self-talk, I was like, hmm, what are some examples uh, that I can give? Uh, and one that came to my mind, uh, which is one I probably won't forget for a little while, um, the Kiwanis in Amory uh, were having a fundraiser. Uh, and they had an Elvis tribute artist come. And the tribute artist uh, was going to sing and we were going to eat. And uh, I was like, oh, this is great, you know. And so I thought that would be uh, it, pretty much. Uh, well, I, I didn't know that there, uh, you know, he had a little comedy going on with his uh, performance. Uh, yeah, he did sing, and he did a wonderful job. You know, he, he sounded great. Well, uh, he would occasionally go up to people at their table and put the microphone uh, in their face and want them to sing, you know, whatever he'd been singing. Or uh, he would serenade the person, or you know he'd gotten nice. And this is Elvis' later years. He got nice and sweaty. Anyway, uh, and he had all these scarves around his neck. So he would occasionally take off one of these scarves and wipe his 
forehead and wipe his exposed chest and then put it around somebody's neck. Uh, so let me tell you, I had some self-talk going on. Uh, so um, I do have uh, some some uh, visuals for you. So glad we sat in the back, you know. Uh, so I was like, "Hey, you sat in the back. What do we do?" Um, well, then I was thinking to myself, Elvis is getting closer. Uh, and my last thoughts were, as he was approaching our table, was a you know, thought and also like a prayer. Uh, Lord, please don't let Elvis put a sweaty scarf around my neck. Um, he, he did. He did find me. And uh, I got a serenade there. He did a sing to me. He was trying to get my hand. Um, but, uh, but I left without a scarf, so that was great. <laughs> so your self-talk can uh, you know, be, uh, it could be some things that you remember uh, in the future. But we're going to know what, how do a researchers measure something uh, that is a private mental process. A lot of this now is a private mental process uh, that we do. So we're going to look at some uh, different ways that uh, self-talk is measured. And a lot of this is relying on the individual to report back uh, what they are experiencing. So self-talk skills. And so I have a three uh, sort of abbreviated here, a self-talk scale. Uh, then we have the VizQR, uh, and then uh, the Nevada Inner Experience uh, Questionnaire. Now I mentioned these three because the individuals that uh, developed these three uh, have been doing research and self-talk for a long time, and then one individual for about 40 decades. So uh, the self-talk scale, Bryn helped develop that. Um, the uh, VizQ, that's uh, uh, Fernie Ho, he developed that one. Um, interesting uh, information he has, and he has some YouTubes out there too, and uh, almost like a TED talk, but, but not that's up on YouTube if you want to check that out. Uh, and then uh, Dr. Holbert. Uh, so, so these have been developed. The first one is looking at outer speech and inner speech. Uh, the second one is just looking at inner speech, and then the third one looks at frequency. So there's so many things that you can learn about a uh, self-talk uh, doing research. Uh, so some individuals like uh, Fernie Ho, he has his scale, but then you'll also look to see, okay, uh, the certain types of self-talk, you know, how does that relate to uh, certain mental illnesses uh, uh, and, and so forth. So he's looking at a lot of uh, different things there. Um, well, to measure it more closely at the occurrence, uh, Holbert uh, decided to start sampling this. And so uh, he would train participants to be able to uh, pick up on the moments that they are having self-talk as compared to when you're having visual information or uh, if you are uh, experiencing sensory information or an emotion. And after they were trained, then they are given a beeper. So during their waking hours, uh, they will be beat randomly. When the beeper goes off, uh, they are to write down what they are experiencing uh, at that time within their mind, whether it be you know, self-talk or, or some other things. Uh, and, and some interesting things that they have found there, and I'll, I'll say that just for a minute. Uh, the other types of studies are neuroimaging. So this is getting participants to uh, they're, they're having a functional MRI, and they are then uh, allowing them to have either some free type of self-talk, uh, inner speech, uh, or uh, they are asking them to say certain things to themselves. Uh, and they are seeing what areas will light up uh, with that functional MRI, what areas uh, are active in the brain. Uh, so uh, the Broca's area, this, uh, this is the left side of the brain. Uh, this is the part of the brain that helps you make words. And so uh, definitely very important. 
Uh, and the Wernicke's area, also on the left side of the brain, this is uh, in an auditory area here, and this is the part of the brain that helps you understand language. Uh, and so they have found that, yes, you're going to see these areas lit up. So another interesting thing, if there is dialogue, uh, yes, you can talk back to yourself anyway. Have you ever talked, have you ever talked back to yourself? Yeah, so, so you say one thing. Uh, within your mind, and then you are, uh, you, you may be uh, saying something back to yourself, or maybe you're saying something the opposite of what you just said. Uh, when uh, when that is going on, you're seeing a lot more activation in the auditory uh, areas. Uh, a cool thing that our brain does when it is working well, they have found, um, yes, the broken area is lit up, but when we're having a dialogue, when we're a uh, back and forth kind of thing going on, um, a part of the brain will send a message to uh, the auditory areas to let the brain know, hey, you are talking to yourself. Uh, and this has led to some other studies that is looking at uh, individuals who are experiencing um, auditory uh, hallucinations. And they believe that something's going on with that mechanism there. Uh, that and the individual, you know, they are their brain is actually creating these words, but they do not recognize that. So, some interesting um, research that they have been working on there. All right. Well, from some of this research, let's look at uh, a couple things. Characteristics of self-talk. You can have con condensed self-talk, and so this is, you know, a word. Uh, maybe a, a short phrase, uh, so maybe you go to a party and they have the dessert table laid out there and, and uh, you're looking at it and you say chocolate within your mind and you know what you're talking about. But you, you see chocolate and it's in your future. Uh, it could be a sentence and it could be dialogue, a back and forth dialogue that you're having uh, with yourself. A frequency. A lot of these questionnaires, a lot of these self-talk uh, scales that are out there that are looking at certain things, uh, people will report that they are having this chatter, this continual uh, you, um, you know, talk within their minds a lot. Um, well, Holbert found something a little different with his sampling. Uh, one of his studies, he found that as he was sampling people throughout the day, um, that only about 26% of the time uh, were individuals experiencing inner self-talk. And so that was different than what they reported with the questionnaire. Um, now one, one thing to note with this study, there, there were some individuals who it was 100% of the time and they were sam sampled, they were having some self-talk. Uh, there were others who had zero self-talk the entire time, no self-talk within the sampling at all. Um, there are there are some individuals who may not have this continual chatter going on uh, in their mind with, with themselves. And, but you know, don't worry, there's still a whole lot going on uh, uh, in the, the person's mind. You know, it may be visual, it may be uh, sensory, and, and so forth. But uh, you know, when they're talking to themselves, it's often going to be out loud, it's not going to be that inner type of talk. And then a uh, function. So self-reinforcement, uh, so patting yourself on the back, verbally inside your mind or, or you know, out loud. Um, Self-management, social assessment, uh, you know, thinking about you know conversations you had and sort of assessing that or thinking about future conversations that you're going to have. Uh, and then, probably the one that we hear more about with self-talk, uh, uh, self-criticism. So we're going to look just in general at uh, the impact of self-talk on personal functioning. So, there are lots and lots of studies uh, in the sports arena and uh, with self-talk and the impact of self-talk. Uh, trying to get, uh, you know, athletes that little extra edge, you know, well, what would help them? What would give them that little extra edge? Uh, one thing they found in some of these studies is that positive self-talk is related to improved performance. 
A motivational self-talk is related to improved in, in, uh, performance. Uh, some, with some studies, they found negative self-talk did uh, relate to um, performance anxiety. Uh, but there are some studies that found that negative self-talk really didn't impact performance. Uh, so, so you'll have, you know, uh, you have some of those also. But so, so the uh, take of that is in positive reinforcement. I mean, positive self-talk and uh, motivational self-talk can improve that. So that that's a, a good thing. Um, academic performance. Uh, with some of the studies that are out there, positive self-talk does have an impact. Uh, on uh, academic performance. In one study they were looking at, they were measuring uh, self-talk at the beginning of uh, you know, a semester in classes, uh, and those who did exhibit positive uh, self-talk had a better outcome uh, than those who were uh, experiencing negative self-talk at the beginning of that semester. Now some of these studies are correlational, and we've just covered this in psychology, uh, Okay, anyone? Correlation does not mean what? Causation. Awesome. Uh, so correlation does not mean causation. So you've got to, there could be some other variables going on there. Um, now, now with this, uh, what, what other studies, academic-wise? Um, there are some pretty cool studies with mathematics and children. And the type of self-talk was important. Yes, a positive self-talk was of creating or was relating to some better mathematic scores, but the type of self-talk mattered. And if it was effort self-talk, that helped improve the mathematic scores. Effort self-talk uh, is encouraging, you know, working and, and uh, putting in the time. Uh, if it was ability self-talk, this did not improve scores. So the person uh, is saying something about their mathematical ability and saying, oh, you know, I'm great at math. <coughs> Uh, that did not improve scores. Uh, in regard to self-regulation, using second or third person uh, helps us regulate ourselves and our emotions uh, better. Let's say it is you know, something that there is uh, a lot of emotion related to, uh, and uh, if you say you instead of I or me, or you use your own name, it gives you a little distance there. Uh, and, and you'll see this used in the uh, sports arena uh, also. So uh, that's uh, something they found, personal distress. With personal distress, there is a relationship between negative self-talk and stress. There's a relationship between negative self-talk and anxiety, depression post-traumatic stress disorder, relapse with addiction, I and mean, we can go down the list. And so uh, in some of these studies, yes, positive self-talk uh, has improved uh, some of these issues that, that people can have. All right. So, you know, your self-talk may be working just fine for you, and no big deal. It's not causing you any distress. And so, you know, probably what we're going to talk about next, uh, you know, may not necessarily apply to you. However, uh, for many, and some of these, uh, you know, scales that are out there, there's a lot of negative self-talk that people do experience. And so, uh, we're going to look at some different types of uh, negative self-talk. All right. You can think of these as characters. Uh, we have the worrier, we have the critic, we have the victim, and we have the perfectionist. Uh, the worrier is the what if. So with the worrier, with the worrier, this is the worst case <laughs> scenario situation. Okay. Uh, so you, you're, something happens in life and you're like, okay, well, because this happened and then you go down the list of all these other things that are going to happen and my life is going to you know, be over. Um, let's say, let's say that, uh, oh, okay, uh, you didn't do too well on that you know, first test. 
Uh, and, and so you're thinking, oh my goodness, um, you know, I didn't do well in this first test, which uh, means I'm not going to do well in this class, which means I'm not going to have a good GPA this semester, which means I'm not going to be able to uh, be a nurse or whatever it is that you're thinking about doing. And so it's just this uh, snowball uh, into uh, this you know, catastrophe. Uh, the worrier promotes anxiety. Anxiety. Uh, so, so then we have the critic. Uh, the, cr the critic promotes low self-esteem. The, the critic is quick to tell you how you are a failure. Okay. Uh, so, with, with the critic, it's that voice that is saying, um, you know, it's pointing out the flaws. It's ignoring all the positive aspects in the world around you, and all the positive things that you do. It's pointing out just the negative things, and um, and it's so constantly judging you uh, and what you do in your everyday life. Uh, the victim. Now with the victim, uh, this is a belief that something is wrong with you, that uh, there's there's some you know uh, something going on in your life that is going to keep you from doing uh, what you would like to do. So deprived, defective unworthy so no one so an example someone might say to themselves no one understands how hard it is for me uh, because of all this stuff that's happened in my life I know I'm hopeless uh, and so this does actually promote feelings of depression and then we have uh, the perfectionist uh, so so on the outside this might you know look pretty good from afar you know the uh, there is this push towards, you know, perfection. <coughs> However, this promotes chronic stress and burnout. Uh, there is this, this strong push towards perfection. I should and I must. I should fill in the blank and I must and you can fill in the blank there. Um, so that person feels like they can't make a mistake. Uh, that uh, and one thing about this particular negative uh, self-talk, the self-worth that the person has is not them as a person having value. Uh, it comes from all these outer things. Well, uh, I have value if I, you know, achieve. If I you know, have this job. If I have this money. If these people like me. And so that is one thing that you'll see with the perfectionist uh, and. Uh, then you can think about what chronic uh, stress and burnout you know, does uh, to your body and your health. Okay, y'all all with me? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, so you know, yes, you could have some of these things going on. I'm not going to talk much about uh, this right here. Just know that there are some cognitive distortions that are playing a role in regard to these particular types of self-talk. I'll, I'll just mention one of these, the all or nothing. Uh, it has to be, you know, you're, you're all or nothing. And a great example of this, let's say that uh, you're on a new, you know, healthy diet, okay? Uh, and you're like, I just had that piece of pie. You know what? I've just blown my entire new diet. Well, forget it. And then you eat the rest of the pie. All right. Uh, so that, that's all or nothing. Okay, so, um, and this is a baby bird, you can check that out on your own if you want to. So, we're going to look at some strategies uh, to counteract some of these negative forms of self-talk. Uh, and, and the first one is redirection, redirection. A lot of self-talk, the negative self-talk that causes distress, there's focus on something that happened in the past or something that's going to happen in the future. So bring, if you know that's causing you distress, bring it to right now. You know, think about, well, what's going on around me in this moment? Uh, take some nice deep breaths, you know, in and out. Uh, and, and then, you know, look around at the world and then see what's going on. Uh, and so, and then they have found in some studies that uh, this is a helpful thing. Uh, the, the second one here is, um, I mentioned second and third person. So, uh, so with this, um, you know, thinking uh, instead of, you know, saying me or I, you've got this. You know, you've got this. 
or, or you know, maybe I'm uh, trying to redirect myself. Okay, Judy, focus in. Focus in on this particular thing that, that you're studying there or that you're working on. Uh, so it is, it is really helpful. Um, fluent training. With fluent training, you are writing as many positive thoughts as you can uh, down uh, for about a minute. And you do that every day for a couple of weeks. And they found that this has been helpful. You're just trying to get some you know, other thoughts in your mind besides those negative ones that are in there. Um, practice positive self-statements. Uh, with the positive self-statements, will one, make them fit you. Also, there are some that will fit everybody. I have value. So, um, I choose how I feel. And that would fit, you know, everybody. Um, you know, and, and so, so think of ones that would fit everybody. And uh, you can start with those. And then you can begin to tailor that to things that you do. Um, countering negative self-talk. situations. Here every day we have situations. Uh, it is often not the situation that causes you uh, emotional distress. It is our perception of the situation and, uh, and, and then these you know, negative thoughts that come to our mind you know, after uh, we perceived it in a certain way. Uh, so one great thing that you can do if you're having a lot of negative self-talk you know, what is the situation? Think about what the situation is. Uh, then, what did you say to yourself? Okay, next would be examine it. So this is my, this is a statement I made to myself. Is it true? Is it true? Uh, if it is true, is it true all the time? You know, is it true all the time? Uh, are you being compassionate with yourself? Um, uh, sometimes we are better to others than we are ourselves. Uh, so is it something that you would say out loud to your best friend? Um, and, and so you're examining it, you're, you're checking that out, and then you will want to reframe that uh, in, in some way. That voice may be telling you, I am a failure. I didn't, I didn't you know, do well on that test. I am a failure. Um, well, we'll reframe that. Reframe that. This has been a challenge for me. Uh, but I am going to start working on this every day. And I'm going to seek out help. Uh, when needed, and, and I can make some progress with this. And, and so doesn't that sound a whole lot different than I am a failure? Um, I need to be perfect. Well, no one is perfect. No one hits the mark. Uh, so, uh, so that's something to say. No one is perfect. It's okay, and I will, for, I will forgive myself when I mess up. And so that is how you can counter your negative uh, self-talk. And so I encourage you guys uh, to try that out. Um, I did have the picture uh, up on the slide, but this is the most wonderful, there's like a chapter in this book on self-talk, the most wonderful uh, workbook that uh, um, the therapists uh, recommend, and there's uh, worksheets and so forth. The, the anxiety and phobia workbook, awesome. All right. Um, so. Uh, Earlier, I was saying, yeah, tailor, tailor it to yourself. So I'm just going to tell you some things I do, and uh, and, and you can think about some things that would fit you know, well for you. Okay. Um, uh, so we have to have a new password about every 90 days. I'm like, hmm. And then every day, I think in my mind what that password is. Uh, so I make it something that is positive. Um, it could be it could be a theme that I have for the year, and then I just you know, add.
add some numbers here and there, you know, as the 90 days uh, come along. And I'm not going to tell you my thing. Anyway, uh, since it is my password. Uh, so it uh, could be, um, you know, sometimes it's a phrase from an inspirational <coughs> song that's just really uplifting to me or, or a, a you know, phrase from my favorite Bible verse. So just, you know, anything that is positive. So, you know, find what makes you, uh, you know, have those positive feelings and, and make that make that your password that you're going to have to be thinking of in your mind every single day. Uh, so that that's one thing that I do. I, I definitely do the second and third person. Okay, Judy, you've got this, you know. Uh, and, and so uh, uh, let's make this happen. You know, some, sometimes my colleagues may think I'm, you know, talking to them. Uh, I am sort of saying, yeah, you too, but a lot of times it's like, uh, I'm talking to myself, let's, let's make this happen. Um, and some, some other things that I do, is the redirection, thinking about, okay, what am I grateful for in this moment? Um, you know, what, what am I thankful for? Uh, and that, uh, that can sort of stop that negative self-talk when you think about what you are uh, grateful for. Uh, so, I've covered a lot of stuff, and I thank you so much for joining me tonight, and I hope you have learned just something new that you could have. Center's uh, network. 
It's my pleasure to introduce Ms. Dees as she's here tonight representing the Missing Humanities Committee. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Dees. Uh, evening's event. Uh, we have refreshments in the art lobby. Uh, thank you all once again for coming.